Hello, hello. We are live. Awesome. So I'm gonna I got on two minutes early just to give everybody a second to hop on due to our last time we had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties and I wanted to make sure we didn't have any of those problems today. So I am on two minutes early and I'm not going to get started for two minutes, okay? But I did want to make sure that y'all had the opportunity to pop on and I'm going to finish gathering my stuff together. Um, I'm really, really excited about coming live with y'all today. So Sticky Fingers, I love this company. I absolutely love it. I love everything that we stand for. Um, it is, um, I don't know what that's saying, so we'll just ignore that. Um, so I do, I love Sticky Fingers and I love everything that our company represents. We are an incredible, incredible um, cooking company for kiddos. So we are a enrichment program for after school. We also do parties and um, we do Girl Scouts and all that good stuff, okay? So we have lots of different things going on. But one of the really, really awesome things that we're doing is we have what we call our culinary cooking club online classes okay so let me see what this keeps popping up give me just a second we're just gonna see what that is while we all right it looks like all is well, so we'll just go with it as all is well. So we have our culinary cooking club online classes, okay? These are super fun, interactive classes. They're independent for our kiddos, so they are single serve recipes that they can have themselves um, and enjoy. We've been making lots of fun stuff in a mug, um, so then they get to enjoy it themselves and then they can make it again and let their family enjoy it too, okay? So we have those options that are available. We do those classes weekly, guys. They're under $10. You can't beat that for an online class, okay? Um, so we'll be doing those weekly moving forward. Um, also, if you haven't already, please make sure y'all subscribe to our newsletter. So we do a weekly newsletter called The Turnip. Um, I absolutely love the name. But make sure you subscribe to that because y'all are going to hear all of the updates. You're going to get promotion codes, know what's going on and what's happening in our business, okay? And if you're loving these lives, make sure that you stay tuned for our next live cooking class we're going to be doing here at Sticky Fingers. And we are going to be doing that October 8th and you will be hanging out with yours truly. And we are going to do a Halloween ice scream. I know, right? So much fun. So um, make sure y'all tune in October 8th and hang out with me for that. Now, for today, we are going to do our jack-o'-lantern pumpkin flapjacks. Pumpkin flapjacks are delicious. Um, we've all probably made pancakes at some point in our life or with someone. We're going to take it even a step further because we're going to make these into pumpkin flapjacks. You can decorate them however you want. I'm going to try to make a pumpkin. You can add different toppings, um, like some crispy apples. You can add some dried cranberries. You can choose to slice up some fresh banana as well. But the recipe that we provide will be the pumpkin pancakes. We're also going to have these delicious add-ins that you can do. It goes with a yummy cherry mashup. It's like just frozen cherries that have been defrosted with a little sugar and vanilla and I have those made up for us. We're going to have that to top it and then we're going to also talk about some fresh whipped cream. Okay, let me grab my phone in case there's an issue because I'm feeling like this is different than normal. Um, okay, so it looks like we are rocking and rolling. Alright guys, so let's get to making our flapjacks. Now, little fun stuff about um, our pancakes. So, Halloween is coming up next month, right? We're all into Halloween. So, a little bit about Halloween, actually. It didn't come about till about 2,000 years ago. And it actually began in Europe by the Celts. 
Um, so that's kind of cool. And costumes were actually used in order to honor our, o our other worldly spirits that are walking around our earth. So that's what costumes were all about and how we got into that. Kind of crazy um, how Halloween goes. But we're going to do that today and celebrate and bring in that month with delicious flapjacks. Now, when we're making flapjack chefs, I or any kind of batter, pancakes, muffins, cakes, things like that, you're always going to mix your dry ingredients in one bowl and your wet ingredients in another bowl, okay? The reason why is you don't want to over stir and make them tough and dry. We don't want hockey pucks, right? We want light and fluffy. Now, when we're measuring our dry ingredients, and the first one we're going to put into the bowl is going to be um, a cup and a third of our flour. Now, I'm going to turn this soap a little bit so you can see how I'm measuring my flour. This is very important. A lot of people, when they're measuring flour, they dive right on into the bowl. That's not what we want to do, chefs. You always want to scoop your flour into your measuring cup, and you kind of want to scoop it up a little extra high, like a mountain. You use the arm of your spoon, and you just wipe it clear. That is a one cup measurement, and we also need a third. So I'm gonna do the same thing with our third cup measurement and our one cup, and that's gonna go into the dry bowl, okay? So we're working dry ingredients first. Now the next dry ingredients that we're gonna go in with is going to be a half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, one half teaspoon of baking, so, um, of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, and one and a half a teaspoons of cream of tartar, and the last, which is the best, is one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Now, you could do that, you could switch that up. You're gonna need your salt, your baking powder, your cream of tartar, and all those ingredients for sure, but you could switch up that cinnamon and use pumpkin spice instead. So if you wanna switch up the flavor, you can definitely do that too by adding that pumpkin spice in instead of the cinnamon, okay? So those are all of our dry ingredients in the bowl and we just wanna make sure we stir those up just to incorporate them, make sure it's all evenly spreaded throughout. Because honestly guys, you can stir your dry ingredients as much as you want and you can stir your wet, but once they come together, you don't wanna stir them too much, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna incorporate all of our wet ingredients in our wet bowl, okay? So the first one we're gonna go in with our wet bowl is going to be one cup of milk, okay? The next ingredient that's going to go in is going to be a cup of pumpkin puree. Now in the store, it's really easy to get mixed up, guys, and you can end up getting pumpkin pie um, filling instead of puree. Make sure you're checking out the can that it says pumpkin puree, okay? So we definitely wanna make sure it's that and it's really easy to get that mixed up. Now, surprisingly, you would think sugar would be in our dry ingredients, but we're gonna put that in our wet. Now, personally, I love that because I think it starts to break up the sugar and help the sugar melt a little and create a different effect in our baking. So baking is truly a science, guys. Um, whereas cooking, um, like dinner, you can play with it more. But with baking, it's very precise. Now we're going to go in with our eggs. When you crack those eggs, chefs, I'm going to show you one slow motion for you, okay? So you can see how we do this. So the way we crack our egg, listen up. You heard the change? When that happens, what you do, now I would normally just one hand it, but let me see how we can show you this. You would hold it up put your thumbs right into the crack and pull it open. When you do that, chefs, you crack your egg, you make sure there's no shells, and then you know you're ready to go into your wet ingredients, okay? So we're gonna give that a little whisk because you wanna break up those eggs, you wanna get it incorporated into that milk and that sugar, get that pumpkin um, broken up because these are thick ingredients, right? And we don't wanna over stir once we mix them together, okay? So we get those nice and whisked up, and look, it starts to look like a pumpkin goo. Good stuff, so about to happen. And when that's mixed up, we're gonna pour that into our dry ingredients. Now, once we got our wet and our dry together, remember guys, we don't wanna over stir. So you'll notice I switched from a whisk for the wet 
now back to the spoon. And the reason why is I don't want to over stir the ingredients, okay? So you just want to stir till you see all the dry disappear. That's very important that the dry goes away, but not over stirred. You definitely might get some lumps, okay? And if you have a few little lumps, it is okay. But that is how we want to mix up our goodies. Really simple um, until it's thoroughly mixed together and it's going to look like it's more uniform. It's going to be thick. All right, so that's okay that it's thick. This way you can actually form your pancake the way that you would like to do. So done stirring. You see how fast that was? Boom, boom, easy peasy. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cook these pancakes over our grill. So I have a flat top grill. I'll show it to you right here. Um, this is what I use to make my pancakes on. Now I love this because it is flat. Um, I have a big family and I can make sure that I cook lots of pancakes by doing it on this grill right here, okay? Um, but if you have like a saute pan, an omelet pan, um, anything like that, that would be sufficient for what we're trying to do. The smaller the side, like the lower it is down, the better the pancake's gonna turn out, in my opinion. Now, we wanna make sure we always grease our pan um, before we make our pancakes. That's important, that way our food doesn't stick to the pan, okay? Um, in this case, we're gonna use a little butter just to add a nice little touch to this, um, this pumpkin flapjack, bring out some of that spice. It's going to be nice and warm and yummy. And then we're going to top it with that fresh whipped cream and the cherry mash as well, okay? So we're just going to put a little butter on our grill. Move it around so you see that it's melting, okay? You don't want to just put it directly on top of the butter while the butter is soft. You definitely want to make sure that your butter has time to melt. Um, because if your pan's not warm enough and the butter hasn't melted, when you put that on, it's going to spread a lot. The warmer the pan, the better it's going to stay together. Now, you don't want to go too hot, guys, right? Um, if you go too hot, it's going to burn too quick, and inside of your pancake is going to be goo, okay? So I wait till my pan's a little warmed up, and I love the cast iron because it holds heat better. And Chef Aaron's going to try to do a pumpkin, Okay. And if I can do it, I'm going to, well, you know, I'm going to say if I can do it. We can do it. We can do it. It might be like an interesting pumpkin, um, but who says we can't have an interesting pumpkin, right? So Chef Erin's going to try to do her little fun pumpkin. Art has never been my specialty, but cooking is my art. I've been cooking for 20-something years, and that's um, definitely my thing to do. Now, while our flapjack is cooking, this would be a good time if you wanted to put some slices of your banana or cranberries or some chocolate chips. Ooh, even some diced up apple would be really good in it. So you could do any of the mixture you want, but you'd want to put that on now so it starts cooking into the recipe. Now, while our pumpkin is cooking, um, I'm going to show you a little something I have on here, okay? This is our fresh whipped cream. Now, fresh whipped cream is literally just our heavy cream that we put into a little tub of wear. Um, when you first put it in, just put the whipping cream. I like to wrap it in a towel, okay? So I cl close this baby up. And reason why is I have worked with a lot of kids and a lot of whipped cream goes everywhere. So I close it up and make a cute little package and then we just whip, 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 whip. You're gonna shake, shake, shake with all your might um, until you hear it starting to get thick. We're going for whipped cream, okay? So I'll show you what that looks like. Oh, it's hard to see, huh? It's just looking like fluffy whipped cream. Now, if you kept shaking, now this is a neat little thing, guys. So whipping cream, when you first start to shake it, you're incorporating air into it. When you're shaking it and you're pumping it through uh, full of air, you make the fat molecules fluff up. So the air fluffs and makes it go from the liquid to the fluffy cream. If you keep beating, what happens is the fat molecules start to grab hold of each other. And when that happens, 
you just made butter and the liquid will separate and everything will come together like a hard butter. So if you ever make fresh whipped cream and you shake it so much that it turns into butter, it's not a waste, guys. Use it for butter. Um, it, it's not a mess up. And if it doesn't get thick enough, you just keep shaking until it gets as thick as you want. So if you wanted a lighter whip or if you wanted a heavier whip, that's completely up to you, okay? Now, when you're making that flapjack, ours is about to be ready to flip. Look at it, look at it. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look exciting, guys? So when it's ready to flip, what you're gonna see starts to happen is little bitty bubbles start to form in our pancake. Um, you'll see them, they'll bubble and then they'll pop. That is the sign that it's time to flip your pancake. Okay, you can always look for the little, oh, I got whipped cream on me. You can always look for the little edges to brown. That's fine. But the true one is when you see those bubbles pop. You don't ever want to press flat on your pancake, guys. You push the air out of it. We don't want to poke it. We don't want to pop the bubbles. Making pancakes is, is a beautiful thing, and it's a very gentle process and a patient process. Um, yeah, I, w I wish y'all could see the little bubbles because they're really just going pop, pop, pop right inside of there. Now what Chef Sarah's going to do when I'm ready to flip is we want to go really fast underneath it and really fast over. We don't want to play with it much because if you do, it's going to mess up that pancake. So one quick swift under, flip over, and leave it alone for another 30 seconds. Quick, quick, quick. And then what I'm going to show y'all guys is how we are going to put it together and see what it looks like. Now, our, our cherries, I mashed about eight ounces worth of cherries up. These are just frozen cherries. Mashed them up, let them defrost, mashed with a tablespoon of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Let that sit there and the sugar starts to melt and make its own little syrup. For our whipping cream, I put a half a cup of cream in here, half of a tablespoon of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and I shook it till it was fluffy. And we also have our pancake recipe as well. Now, while I'm plating this up and showing you what it looks like, my little, my pumpkin, guys. Oh my goodness, let's see. Let's see if y'all think it looks like a pumpkin. <laughs> this is fun. Oh, this is good stuff right here, okay? So this is my pumpkin, yeah, right? Okay, we're gonna we y'all we're gonna do this we're gonna do this right now. We gotta make some little eyes so people think I really am a jack o' lantern because I think I don't look like a jack o' lantern. So maybe if I take out some eyes, I'll look like one. Maybe right? That's what I would have done for my kiddos. Okay, here we go. Hold on, guys, bear with me. I'm taking out the eyes. It's a little moist, but it's delicious. Okay, here we go. Now, where should I stick? the cherry goo maybe in the eyes what should I do I'm just gonna go around the edge because I want you to see my cool little jack-o-lantern okay and then we're gonna go in with some of our fresh whipped cream oh my goodness y'all this is exciting okay this is exciting all right I told you art artist skills were not my best but here we go my little jack-o-lantern pancake with some fresh whipped cream and some cherry mash. <laughs> Good times, right? Cooking's supposed to be fun, guys. That's one thing I've learned about sticky fingers. Being in the restaurant industry my whole life, I thought everything had to be absolutely perfect and uptight. But guess what? These kids, they have taught me, let's have a lot of fun in the kitchen. And who cares what it looks like? We had fun making it. We laughed. We learned a lot about baking. And we're, now we're going to get to enjoy it and eat it. That's the cool part. Did y'all know that cherries were actually a part of the Rose family? Who knew? And the person who could spit the cherry the farthest did it for 94 feet. That's pretty crazy. And I'm gonna leave you with this note. How many cherries do you think are in one pie? I'd love to see your guesses. How many cherries do you think are in one pie? Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I had a fantastic... Oh, I'm over here burning stuff. You know, it's all good. Let's move that out of the way. Um, thank y'all for hanging out. You know, this is fun. That's butter. That This is a real, real show, real time. 
So thanks y'all for hanging out. Definitely make sure you subscribe to the newsletter, The Turn Up. Stay tuned on October 8th to make ice cream with me and check out our culinary online classes for under 10 bucks a week, guys. So thanks for hanging out. I hope y'all enjoyed. And guess what? 250 cherries are in a pie. Isn't that cool? All right, guys. Y'all have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will see you later. If I can figure out how to shut it.